Absolutely. So um, we had Supergirl on before you, but what I want to say is I think this is back-to-back -back Supergirls. Am I right? Because we got Aww, Laurie Hernandez, you. Olympic gold medalist. Thank you. So you've won a gold medal at the Olympics. You won Dancing with the Stars. Now you have a book published. Do you guys know how old she is, by the way? 16 years old. What were you guys doing at 16? Not Aww, that. Thank you. <laughs> but pretty, you've had a pretty incredible uh, year. What is it like just conquering the world at 16? Um, it's definitely <laughs> been a giant whirlwind. I mean, being able to go to the Olympics and then go on Dancing with the Stars and have all these amazing opportunities, it's, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> you just make me feel bad, because I was just thinking about no. what I was doing at 16 no, when no. I was looking. <laughs> um, and then we were talking backstage, but I find this pretty cool, but I'm a big SBU fan, and you are as well. I love Law & Order. I know, I know, I know. So she's, she's going to be on SVU. That's pretty cool. <laughs> You don't know what you're doing yet, though, right? We don't know if you're yeah, I don't the murderer, know yet. Who knows? not the murderer. Maybe just pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> so the book, which we have right here, is uh, I Got This. It's a, it's a phrase you uttered at the Olympics yes. um, that was kind of caught on camera. Was that, was that planned, or was that just in the moment you were um, feeling it? I mean, it wasn't scripted at all. It was more just like at every competition, I always have like this nervous tick to talk to myself and be like, Okay, you can do it. I believe in you. You're good. You're fine. You got it. And um, I, I talked to myself. So right before I went up to compete at the Olympics on beam, I whispered, I got this. And the camera caught it, and it went viral. So, yeah. <laughs> do people worry about you when you're talking to yourself? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what else have you said to yourself? Anything? Um, you're good. You've worked hard for this. You can do it. And it's literally like self-talk motivation. And then I just say it until my mind believes it, and it calms me down. Awesome. And then how did you decide on this phrase as the the title of your of your book um well knowing that people really saw me say this phrase and i guess it really caught people's attention i thought hey i guess they really like that quote and maybe it related to some people so it's like boom were there, were there other alternative titles that you considered or was this just like no brainer i got this this is kind Hernandez. of a no brainer just because um the way that people reacted to it it was you know this gif of me is it gif or jif i think it's a gif Gif? Is it a GIF? I don't know. Last the, I see both whenever. <laughs> so, um, GIF, GIF. But there's one of those of me um, whispering, I got this what, right before I went on the beam. And so seeing that really go all over Twitter, I was like, okay, this will be familiar to people. Is it like you're known as sort of like, was it the emoji? <laughs> the human emoji. The human emoji. Uh, growing up now with, you know, when I was in 2008, the Olympics, there was nothing like this. And now you are sort of associated with emojis. Um, yeah. What is that like? Was that fun for you? And how did that, how did you get that tag? Well, as a gymnast, I was known as a very expressive gymnast just because typically your average gymnast can be very serious and, you know, tuned into their work, which is kind of how it should be because we do crazy flips and we have to be focused. But at the same time, I was always very bubbly and very excited to be in new situations and competitions. And they were like, this kid, any emotion she's thinking, it's always showing up on her face. And so they, they gave me human emoji, and I think it fits. <laughs> <laughs> do people online, can you show us some emoji faces? Uh, yeah, which one do you, you want to see? Um, I got a list. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got a list. Well, let's start with a smiley face with open mouth. <laughs> That's a good one. This is one I don't want to get today, but the, the side eye. Oh, <laughs> all right. If I give you a bad question, you give me that eye, I'm going to feel very bad. Oh, you'll, you'll um, see it. Surprise face. <laughs> all right, last one, last one. This is good, though. This is awesome for parties, I think. For sure. <laughs> when you go to parties, Should you're 16. Scared? You shouldn't be at parties. Epic grin. <laughs> He's not even kidding. <laughs> Do you have any favorites or new ones that you've broken um, out? Yeah, the monkey one is definitely my favorite. It's like, like, <laughs> a microphone in this hand. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I loved reading your book, and I love, like, you guys. You guys like the Olympics? I assume we got some Olympic fans here. So I think, like, millions of people, probably billions around the world, I watched you guys just dominating at the Olympics. Aww, thank and you. I love just getting the inside stories. So another kind of moment you had was right before you did your floor routine, you kind of <laughs> gave the, uh, the floor judge, like, a little, a little wink. Um, <laughs> Was that plan, or that you was just very these, bold of me? Yes. I look back and I'm like, <laughs> Did you know that was coming? Were you like, I'm gonna go out there, wink at the floor judge, and then do this, or is this all just like 
Laura Hernandez is a <laughs> spontaneous energy. It was very spontaneous, but actually, right before I went up to compete in floor, I was really nervous, and my teammates were like, dude, relax, you got it. Like, we're doing really well at this competition. You're going to be fine. Just go out there and be excited and, you know, feel that energy. And I just went up there, and I was like, I oh, feel the energy, man. Blink. And I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> but I did it. And <laughs> stuck with me forever did now. Did you have that thought as you were starting? Like, why did I do that? Or is it just uh, Well, like the thought beforehand was like, I'm going to wink at you. I'm so excited for this routine. You're going to like this routine. Then I just, oh, my gosh, why did I do that? That was such a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to think of you thinking of that as you're like, about I'm the to biggest compete, stage like of this course, <laughs> about to compete. Um, so I also want to ask you, um, you know, just... Well, there's a lot of good stories in the book. I don't want to give all of them away, but uh, mm-hmm. you, you write in the favorites. book that you're, you're kind of a crier. I am a crier. And your sister gave you kind of a funny present when you qualified for the Olympics. Yeah, so basically before Olympic trials, uh, <laughs> 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 oops, before Olympic trials, we all went out to eat and I had like this breakdown and I was just crying while I was all over the place because my routines weren't coming into place and exactly how I wanted them to. And this poor waitress kept bringing over mounds and mounds of, like, tissues. Put them on the table. There's just tissues everywhere. And as we were leaving, my sister looked at my dad and said, when she makes the Olympics, I'm going to give these back to her. And so I went to Olympic trials, and I was able to make the Olympic team. We came home, had a celebratory dinner, and my sister handed me a goodie bag with the tissues in there. She was like, when you thought, you know, you didn't believe in yourself, we believed in you. And it was a really beautiful moment. So, Do you still have the, the dirty tissues? Of course. Nice. Where do you, where do you keep those? Somewhere. Somewhere? <laughs> We're going to be talking about where she keeps all her stuff. So she keeps all her stuff. No, we can start with the dirty tissues. <laughs> um, so let me ask you a little bit um, about um, what it's like to be at the Olympics at 16. Because I think people think of the Olympics and they see the stories of, like, wild partying and stuff like that. Michael Phelps winning everything. Michael <laughs> Phelps, yeah. But but I think you guys are a little more like under lock and key. Like, do you feel like if you were kind of missing out at all? And what is it like to be sort of 15, 16 at the Olympics? I don't think we were missing out at all. I mean, I think being at the Olympics at 16, it's, um, it's like a reality check because you go in there with this gigantic goal you want to do so well and you don't want to ruin it. And so you're going to bed at perfect times. You're eating all the right foods. And you're making sure that you're very kind to your teammates because this is such a stressful situation. It's such a stressful time that you want to make sure that everybody's good and we're lowering our stress levels as low as possible. So I think being able to do all that as a person, it, you know, made me better. Were there any Olympians that you were excited to meet at the game? Of course. Besides the fencing team. Besides you. (laughs) You're an Olympian. He's an Olympian. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I just switched it up. I would give you my smiley emoji face, but I don't have that skill. (laughs) No smiles. <laughs> I can't do it. How do you do the smiley face? You can do it. I believe in it's you. Go. Just, that's not it. It's that's okay. really bad. You got this. I got this. Thank you. Look <laughs> at that. Motivation everywhere. Awesome. 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 And I want to get into your, like how you got in gymnastics. So I read in your book <laughs> that you started in dance. Your parents put you in dance, but you did not. You didn't really take to it. It was more like it wasn't necessarily like hip hop or ballroom dancing. It was ballet dancing. And I think that being two and three years old at the time, it was a little too serious for my age. But after every dance rehearsal, they gave us sugar cookies. And so I would do the dance, and I was like, man, if I stayed the whole rehearsal, i get sugar cookies. And that was my reason to stay. But then at some point, I saw a gymnast on TV. I looked at her, and I was like, I want to do what she does. And my mom was like, gymnastics? And I was like, yes, gymnastics. So that she really put me in. from you. She brought it. And then when, did you, when you started doing gymnastics, did you just take to it right away? Like, what were your first impressions <laughs> that first day at gymnastics, if you can remember? Um, Well, I started at five, so that was pretty early on, still in kindergarten, and I think my earliest memory was me just walking down the beam in a a yellow T-shirt, and there's an instructor holding my hand. It was like a fake competition. It wasn't even real. But I looked into the crowd and saw my parents just sitting there clapping as I'm walking down this four-inch piece of wood, and yeah. (laughs) And that was it. And when did you start to think about, okay, I can be really good at gymnastics. When was that transition for you? Was it something you thought about? Was it something your coaches just started realizing, seeing you? How how did you go on this journey that got you to the the Rio Olympics? It's really hard as a gymnast to find out when you're a good gymnast because you can't watch yourself. You watch other gymnasts do gymnastics. And so 
seeing other gymnasts right in front of you, you're like, wow, she's going to be good, or, well, she, she's almost there, but you can never watch yourself. And so it was really hard to figure out, oh, I, I'm Olympic level, like, I can for sure do this. Um, but it took a couple competitions for me to realize, okay, I can get there if I slowly keep on progressing. And it's a big choice. So at, at a certain point, you began homeschooling, correct? And, yeah. and training. What is that decision like to have to say, like, I'm going to, my number one priority is going to become gymnastics? Well, I guess that happened at a very early age. I started homeschooling in third grade. And I did everything to dedicate it to gymnastics because I love this sport so much. And my parents supported me the whole way through. It was like, hey, I want to homeschool. OK, well, do you really want to? And I was like, yes, I love this sport. And so they let me. And I really dedicated everything to it. What, so what is like a third grader's gymnastics schedule like at that age? Like how often were you practicing? I mean, I was practicing maybe five days a week, six days a week. And no, that's a lie. Five days a week, probably. But at the same time, I, I just loved the sport so much. I wanted to be completely invested in it. And I knew that it was one of my passions and I wanted my life to revolve around it. And do you feel like you missed out on anything in your childhood, like spending so much time doing gymnastics? <laughs> well, because I homeschooled at such a young age, it wasn't like I was leaving any friends. But as I started to get older, I did notice that all my friends were gymnastics friends and they weren't like public school friends and I really wanted those, but at the same time, I knew that what I was doing was good for me and good for the sport. And as I was coming out here, your, your squad was whispering in my ear that I should ask you about your 2017 goals, and maybe some of those are like bucket list from childhood, but what are your 2017 goals that you have? Um, well, I definitely want to get my driver's license because, uh, as you guys know, like in New Jersey, you can get your permit at 16, but I haven't really been home. So um, just because I'm on like Dancing with the Stars tour and everything, so I, I've been traveling so much, but I do plan on getting my license soon. Nice, nice. I heard you have another goal. You've not been on a date. Is that is that a goal? I want to go on a date. <laughs> <laughs> we got we we got to we got to help you out with this. How can Lori Hernandez not have a date? Come on, let's well, go, mean, high school boys. Where are you? <laughs> oh boy. What, what are you looking for in a in a potential first date? type of guys. I mean, if he looks like Dave Franco, then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so looks like Dave Franco, can dance like Val. Can dance like Val and is as kind as my dad. Oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs> is dad here, by the way? I, like, oh, he's, I, know I he's think coming so. <laughs> I'm not sure. That, that's a good. That's some good criteria. All right, we put it out there to the world, Laura Hernandez. We got. We got to make this happen. I, I think it's gonna happen for Let's you. Let's make it happen. Yes, I definitely think it's gonna happen. And um, when when was the moment you sort of uh, realized you were you were there? Like, had, I mean, has it even set in? Like, you're an Olympic gold medalist, and all all, mm -hmm. the, all that's happened. I mean, it happened really. It happens really quickly. It really does happen quickly. I mean, when you're in the moment, you're focused on your routines. You're not so much focused that. You're at the Olympics, although that was one of my concerns is that it was my first big senior level competition. And to be a senior in gymnastics, you have to be 16 years old. So I had never done anything like this. I'd never been to a world championship like this was my first ever. And all the girls were like, look, this crowd is going to be loud. OK, just prepare yourself for that. And I was like, oh, yeah, Olympic trials. It was really loud. But the Olympics, it was dome shaped. And so walking in, it was just USA. And it was so loud, I thought I was going to cry. But we figured out that if you don't look around so much, you don't see Rio 2016 everywhere, and you forget you're at the Olympics. So that helps. How helpful and important were your teammates? Like, Allie, Allie having been there before, like, did she offer you advice? They were so helpful. I mean, it was more just to stay in that mind zone. Mind zone. That works. Mindset. Mind zone. <laughs> Oops. It works. It still works. So That's going to be book number two is mind zone. Mind zone. Um. <laughs> There, write, write that down, guys. Mind, <laughs> mind zone. zone. But um, yeah, to be in that mindset, um, it was hard because for me as a person, I do something called grounding, and I look around, and that like calms me down. But seeing Rio 2016 everywhere didn't help, so they told me just to keep my head down, pretend like I'm just practicing, and that helped a lot. And then standing on that podium, I know it's a question you get. Like You're going to get this like a million more times in your life, but what is that feeling the gold medal being like put over your head, the national anthem playing. Well, we thought we, all, we were all going to cry when we got it, but we were just overwhelmed with happiness that it didn't happen. The tears didn't flow. But it was being able to stand on the podium with your team, get a gold medal wrapped around your neck, and then hear your national anthem play. And that was 
such a beautiful moment and something I'm going to remember forever. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to cover. You've done so much this last year. But once the Olympics are done, you go on this roller coaster ride. You obviously, by the way, she also won Dancing with the Stars. So we got to give it up for that, too. Thank you. Um, how did that experience compare to the Olympics? Uh, they're both completely different. I mean, for gymnastics, you do the routines over and over again until you nail them. And then that's where the stress comes in because you've done it so many times, you're like, okay, it has to be perfect. Whereas Dancing with the Stars, every single week you learned a new dance, you learned a new style of dance, different shoes, different dresses. It was really difficult. And being able to get in and experience both, it was amazing. I, I really enjoy this next question that I wrote, but it made uh -oh. that funny, but I, I, I thought it was funny. So how does the competition compare, like the Russian and Chinese gymnastics teams versus like Amber Rose and Vanilla Ice and Rick Perry? Can you, is there any comparison? Ice, yes. Um, it's really, really Similar hard. and different competing against Vanilla Ice than a Russian gymnast. Uh, very different, very different. <laughs> For gymnastics, it's more just being able to look and watch the cultures of other gymnasts and see the way that they do things. Because watching a Russian gymnast on bars, you are like, wow, she is beautiful. You can tell how hard she's worked. And then also dancing with celebrities who learn ballroom dancing, it's completely different. It's like a new world. And being able to see how hard our professional dancers work just to teach us the steps. It's like, wow, they really put in time and effort to teach us how to step backwards properly. So. What do you think, like, at the Olympics, there's sort of, like, the subtle mind games that the teams play with each other? Like, did any, did that happen on Dancing with Stars, too? Like, did anyone try to intimidate you or talk <laughs> trash or anything? No, everyone was pretty nice. Everyone was pretty nice? Oh. Yeah, I'm, the, like, the nugget of the group. So. <laughs> and what was it like to, uh, I know you've talked a lot about your relationship with Val, like, you said you learned a lot from him, so what was that, like, dancing with him and uh, it seems like you, he had kind of a, a mentor relationship with you as well. We did. He was like a teacher, mentor, a brother to me. And we got very close during the season. My mom has already like adopted him into the <laughs> family. But um, yeah, he's been amazing. And he's taught me so much like being able to be grateful for every moment, everything and everyone because they're not there forever. And also that I like R&B music. So that's cool. <laughs> he taught you that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, interesting. Whenever and we warmed up, music was always playing. And I was like, oh, I like that song. And his advice to you was it's, it's different than gymnastics where the moves are really important. It was sort of the communication with the crowd. Um, yeah, I mean, also just being able to interact with the crowd and um, show your story through dance. That's what he likes to do. He is always telling me, like, it's not about the steps that you're doing. It's the intentions of your step. And it's like, you're a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any tips that you picked up that you think will help you in gymnastics? If I'm able well, to, you're already winking at judges. Dance. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're very different. I don't think I'll be using heels on the floor on exercise the dance floor, or yes. on the beam. <laughs> no heels on the beam, please. And where are you keeping the mirror ball trophy? The mirror ball is like in the middle of our living room. Just on a coffee Mom table. Mom did that, yeah, on the Mom coffee did that. table. Where are the Olympic medals? In a safe. <laughs> okay, so if we go to your house, mirror ball trophy, center stage. Yes, and you'll never find the medals. And you'll never find the medals. <laughs> good to know, good to know, good to know. And I'm wondering, um, there's been a little bit of, uh, well, you're on tour right now as well, right? Yes. Dancing with the Stars. What has that been like? It's been amazing. Everyone is so kind. And we've been watching a lot of movies on the tour bus and playing a lot of music. And Who's your bestie on the tour? My bestie? Um, <laughs> I don't know. They're all really nice. They're all really nice? They're all very nice. Our Our buses are split into, like, half girls, half guys, and... It's not like all girls and all guys, so having that mixture, it's like everyone gets along so well, and they're definitely like family to me. So you guys are on a, who's on your bus? Uh, I have Val, Gleb, Keo, Alan, and Sharna. Okay. And what, you guys fight over, like, the TV shows at night? Like, what's it like in that van? In um, van? We don't really fight over anything. <laughs> what are you guys watching on the, on the Dancing with the Stars bus? Whatever we can find. I think the other day we watched a polar bear documentary because we couldn't find anything. Nice, nice. So, yeah, life is good. Very awesome. Um, well, I got a bunch of questions for you just okay. before we get to the crowd. So we're going to kind of speed through a couple of these. I'm but, ready. But are you ready? All right. So you were at the VMAs. You got to meet Beyonce. What Beyonce. was that like? <laughs> um, I think that's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> but... Actually, being able to meet Beyonce, we were freaking out because we opened up the note card, saw it read Beyonce, and we just looked at each other like, this is Beyonce. We're presenting an award, too. 
she hugged us. She had rhinestones on. They were scratching us. We were like, Beyonce scratched us. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say anything to her? Uh, I can't remember. You can't remember. I was just standing there like this the whole time. You got to meet Kanye as well. I made Kanye smile. You made Kanye smile? That's good luck. He needs it. He needs a smile. He's had a tough year. He's had a good smile. He should smile more. If anyone can make Kanye smile, it's it's you, I think, Lori. Mm, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I want to ask, really, this, we're going through quick questions, but there is a fencing dance on the Dancing with the Stars tour. There is. But you do not participate. I can't do it, no. But what does it look like? Um. <laughs> do you know any of the moves? Uh, Yeah. What can you dem can you demo? No. Can you explain? <laughs> Is it bad? Is it like it's just very <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's cool, okay. <laughs> uh yeah, but no, the it's an all girls number. And okay. They have an all guys number and an all girls number. And so for the guys number they do a dance to A No Sunshine and um it's like acoustic. They're dancing on like tables and stuff. It's <laughs> moving tables. It's really cool. And um, the girl's number is a fencing number. And so if that's theirs. And they're lunging? This doesn't sound like fencing if you can't describe it. <laughs> it's, it's not like, like the sport that we do at the Fencing Olympics. and dancing? It's like fancying? It's like fancying. fancying. <laughs> where, where can people, where is your next stop if people want to check you out on the tour? Well, right now my next stop is in New Jersey. Whoa. So, you guys got to get out there. That's, that's my home state. So, yeah. Um, final question, then we're going to the audience. I can't believe it's gone so fast. 2020. I think so. Yeah, or nay. You think so? I think so. Awesome. I mean, we need our 2020. We need to keep going. Yeah. Awesome. Let's uh, let's get to the audience. Where are we? Uh, where are we? Right here. Right here, up in front. Hey, how are mic. you? Good. How are you? Good. Congratulations, Rio. Dancing Thank with you. the stars. My daughter's told me to tell you hello. So <laughs> my question to you is: I am a mom of two gymnasts. Uh, six and nine, Caitlin and Gabriella. What advice would you give them? Because they really love this sport, and they see they have your posters, they have all the Aww. girls. They want to be Olympic gold medalist and everything. What advice would you give them? Uh, I would give them just to keep moving forward because, as a gymnast and as an athlete in general, it can be very easy for anyone to feel like the sport is too hard and like they should stop doing the sport because they feel that the challenges coming towards them are just too much but you know god doesn't give you what you can't handle so just to for them to whether it's injuries whether it's a rough day for them to keep moving forward because they can do it awesome right here hi, um, hi thank you for being here um you look so pretty by the way thank <laughs> um, you um, and uh how do you feel knowing that you inspire so many people across the nation and the world it really warms my heart to know that uh everyone sees me as an inspiration because as a kid Growing up and being able to see so many athletes, for me, that was inspirational. And they inspired me to start something new and to try something new. And so now that I'm able to do that, it's really heartwarming. And I hope that I'm able to do that in the future as well. Awesome. Oh, going this way. Surprise. Congratulations. Hi. Um, Hi. You won the Olympics. You won Dancing with the Stars. You wrote a book. What can we look for in the near future? Oh, that's yeah, you haven't really done anything question. yet. When are you going to start doing something with your life, Lori? I don't know. I just sit around all the time. But... Um, <laughs> That's a very good question. Right now I'm on the Dancing with the Stars tour, and there's about a month left of that. Also, I plan on doing book tours for my book. So that'll be really exciting. And Law and Order in the future. <laughs> That's big. Thank you. You too. All right, right here, the man with a cool hat. Hi, my I name like is Edgardo. Um, I write comics like superheroes like Borinquena or like yourself. Um, my son is 13, and we were in Puerto Rico watching you um, winning. And it was amazing, amazing to actually be in Puerto Rico in a Puerto Rican restaurant, seeing all these people cheering for you. And it just this amazing energy. So my question is actually from my 13-year-old son, which he Aww. always asks everyone. But seeing as you already are his superhero, if you were a superhero with superpowers, what would be your superpower and what would you fight for? Ooh. Wow. Oh. That's a good question. Well, I mean, I'm a really big fan of Iron Man and Superwoman, so... If I could mash the two together, I, f I for sure would. I yeah. can see like a super character with your emoji faces has special powers. Like <laughs> you can go in and give a certain emoji face and just like just power they know that I'm really happy or that. really angry at that. No, no, but it impact the crowd. I can see. Mm, it. You got to do it. You write comics, <laughs> so we got to make this happen. Smile, let's let's see the Lori smiles. Hernandez comic. Sad. Everybody's sad. <laughs> well, Lori, I'm kind of sad because we're we're out. We're running out of time. 
But I do want to say you guys should go pick up this book. Yay! I got this. It is awesome. Very inspirational. Yay! If people want to find out where you're going to be for your book tour, for Dancing with the Stars, for whatever else you're going to be doing, what's the best place for them to follow you? Uh, tune into all my social media accounts just because that's where... There's like only 20 of them. Oh, well, I mean, there's a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I do have Snapchat, and those are all linked together. And so basically, if you follow all of those, you'll be able to see what's coming next and where I'll be next. Awesome. Congratulations, Lori Hernandez, everyone. Hey, well, Thank you so much. Woo.